most amazing equipment I've seen. Brent Stewart, tell me, what is this very frightening looking, is it a gun? What is it? Well, this is a, it's a small air assisted, uh, low powered spear gun. It's what we use to attach the two tags that we're using. Oh, and what sort of tags are they? What do they record? Uh, two things. They're still very little known about whale sharks and the, the key thing to know about any species is where it lives. So we're trying to learn where sh whale sharks live vertically and geographically and that's what these two tags are telling us. So they've got um, GPS recorders on the tag? No, they're not GPS. This, this tag is just uh, recording water temperature and depth every five minutes and it will do that for about 400 days. So we attach that to the shark and later we'll try to recover this and storing all the information in that Oh right, and this um, this goes into the shark? This, uh, we, we penetrate the skin, this goes through the, the skin, which is fairly thin in whale sharks, but it's tough, and then uh, is embedded in the fat layer. There's a fairly thick fat layer of a couple of inches or more. So it doesn't um, actually harm the shark to have it? It shouldn't. Um, it shouldn't harm the shark. They feel the tag when it goes in. When the dart goes in, they'll feel it, and some react and some pay no attention to it at all. But the tags are fairly uh, uh, small, they're very small compared to the size of the whale shark. Yeah, this is absolutely tiny. I mean, how big can a whale shark grow to? Uh, well, there have been some estimated at 45 feet, but that's probably uh, maybe an exaggeration. Well, pretty, pretty a long. little bit frightening if I see something that big in yeah. the water. The ones that we're um, seeing are about uh, 4 to 7 meters, pretty small. Okay, and, and what is this? This is the other type of tag. This will um, give us information on the same thing that that does, where the shark is spending its time in the water column, and also where it's going geographically, which is something we're trying to learn. Right. Sharks stay here all year round, or they're resident, or are they moving and interacting with aggregations of sharks elsewhere in the Indian Ocean or in the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans. So, so I understand this is the second year that you've done this. So is it, um, is it something, has it actually provided enough information for you? Do you, do you know more than you did? <laughs> uh, we know a little bit more than we did. Last year was a pilot study about the same time, May last year. And uh, we attached, uh, we tagged 10 sharks, uh, some with both kinds of tags. And we got short-term information on the movements of four of those sharks. One week, two for three weeks, and another for six weeks. So we're leaving these out a little bit longer, about 100 days, 120 days. and. Uh, This is the second uh, technique or tool that we're using to find out where sharks go um, after we leave these aggregations. It's a uh, skin biopsy. Oh wow, and uh, so is there some skin actually in this? Yes, that's what we collect. And we'll look oh. at the genetics of a couple of loci and, and uh, look at the interactions among them. Oh, so you were lucky yesterday, you saw some whale sharks. Like, I really hope that today that we might find one. I hope so too. <laughs> whale shark! Oh, there is one! There's a whale shark!